right, so welcome everyone. Uh, as I said, my name is Sarah. I'm going to be giving this presentation on our introduction to corporate giving. Uh, it's the first time we here at the Forefront Library have offered this presentation, so please go easy on us. First, we will talk a little bit about Forefront as an organization. So in case anybody is not particularly familiar with us, Forefront is a membership organization for nonprofits, grant makers, and advisors throughout the state of Illinois. We offer education, research services, uh, networking opportunities, and uh, advocacy leadership for the nonprofit sector. Um, here in the library specifically, that is focused mainly on kind of that research and education portion of it. Um, we are still not physically open. So unfortunately, I cannot invite anyone to visit us at this time yet. Uh, however, you can visit our website to see some of our informational guides that are freely available and see some of the smaller databases we have collected in one place that can give some uh, informational context to things. Uh, for Forefront members, we perform remote research assistance where we answer a variety of questions uh, via email usually uh, to kind of provide that support there. We are also a member of Candid's Funding Information Network. Uh, that means we are a FIN. That is how we have access to some of the training materials like a lot of what I'm presenting today, as well as access to databases like Foundation Directory Online. Uh, with Foundation Director Online, we'll be looking at it actually briefly near the end of this presentation. Uh, and also, at this time, Candid, uh, in recognition of the fact that uh, we are still encouraging social distancing and people to not uh, gather, uh, is making uh, day passes available for their Foundation Director Online essential database. Uh, it does not have quite all the features of the professional version that I'll be searching when I get to that part of this presentation, uh, but it does allow you to search the database from home uh, on a limited basis. Uh, if you want more information about that, you can email us in the library and we will be happy to send you the link and uh, process documents to get you started there. All right, so that being said, look at the goals for today's session. At the end of this, we will be talking about what companies give, the different kinds of options for corporate support, both cash and non-cash options, why they give, their motivations, what they're doing for you know, philanthropic reasons or other kinds of motivations as well, uh, what those are, what the companies are generally looking for from their nonprofit partners and how to kind of find corporate partners. Uh, with a lot of traditional foundations, you're going to submit an application for a proposal and it is going to either be accepted or not. Uh, with companies, there are generally several avenues to go down, especially with larger ones. And that means that there are multiple ways to develop relationships. Uh, we'll look at a few tools that are available for that, uh, including, as I mentioned, Foundation Directory Online. All right, first, looking at how companies give. So before we really talk about you know, anything like motivations or you know, interest in partnerships, take a quick look at <clears throat> how companies support nonprofits. So from the graph, you can see corporations contribute to nonprofits both monetarily and through non-monetary means. Uh, it's shown that corporate giving primarily falls in the form of cash contributions uh, with only a little over a fifth, 21% coming in the form of non-cash. Uh, so we'll talk about non-cash later uh, and what exactly is included in that. But first, looking at the cash donation side. Uh, while it's all together here, it might be a little more instructive to think of it split up a bit more. Uh, to break the cash down into foundation cash and direct cash, which aren't evenly split, but aren't too far off being evenly split uh, from that section of the pie. Uh, this is something to think about yeah, because as previously mentioned, corporations can contribute in various ways. Uh, so while traditional foundations generally have the one mechanism of 
the grant process for requests. A uh, company has a couple of different ways they work. So one door closes, there may be another door to try. All right, so looking at cash contributions. Cash contributions can come in a few different forms. There are grants, uh, there are corporate contributions, there are corporate sponsorships, there's cause-related marketing, and then matching gifts through employees. Uh, we will be doc talking about those more each in detail, so don't worry if you didn't, if you're taking notes and didn't get all of those written down exact right off the bat. Uh, first, look at foundation grants. So, <clears throat> some companies do choose to make contributions through organized philanthropy, so they set up a foundation to distribute grant funds. Uh, these company-sponsored foundations can also be referred to as corporate foundations, uh, and they are basically private foundations whose grant funds are derived from the contributions of a for-profit business. A company-sponsored foundation may retain close ties to the donor company, but it is an independent organization with its own endowment, its own board of directors, and it is subject to the same rules and regulations as any other private foundation, you know, family foundations or independent foundations. Uh, here in Chicago, the headquarters for Motorola, Motorola's uh, foundation exist. Uh, Grand Victoria Casino has a foundation associated with them as well. So there are a number of companies that have official foundations associated with them. Now, again, since these are private foundations, the same way any other foundation that is started by an individual or a family is, um, they do follow the same rules. They have to file 990s. They have to give some money away. Uh, so you can look them up basically like any other type of foundation there. All right. So next, corporate contributions. This is kind of the direct cash part of that previous chart. So for many companies, they will have both a foundation and a direct corporate giving program. Uh, Exelon, for example, headquartered in Chicago, does have both a company foundation, which is that separate independent organization that is just associated with the company, and a giving program that is basically considered part of the company. Direct corporate giving programs are established and administered within the company. So they're more of a division rather than a separate institution. Uh, unlike corporate foundations, these corporate, con uh, corporate contributions aren't a separate entity from the company, and their annual grant totals are generally more related to the company's current profits. Uh, they also don't have to follow these same rules as a foundation since they are still more of a program or division within the company. Uh, so they do not file in the 1990s, thus a lot of times public information about exactly what they've given can be a little more difficult. Uh, you're relying more some on their reports of things or on uh, annual reports or thank yous from the organizations that they have given to. All right, so next, corporate sponsorships. <clears throat> corporate sponsorships are this form of marketing where a company pays for some or all of the costs associated with a project or a program in exchange for recognition. That level of recognition can depend on the goals of the sponsor. Uh, a successful sponsorship benefits both the nonprofit and the sponsor. Now, why would a company be interested in sponsoring an event? Well, events can attract large groups of people that can bring a lot of visibility to the company. A company may choose to sponsor events so they can get their name and their brand in front of a lot of people. Uh, we'll talk a little more about that sort of thing when we actually look at uh, company motivations. Now, when we think of sponsorships, we tend to think of events, but companies can sponsor other things like scholarship programs, uh, general kinds of sets of programs, you know, a cohort of things. So, <clears throat> you know, for example, if you looked at the, uh, if you looked at basically any uh, gala held by a nonprofit organization, uh, you would see a list of company sponsors. And so you would see kind of, you know, the people whose names would, you know, show up in advertising for a program or in, you know, uh, 
the kind of program book you might get at the event or that sort of thing. So those can frequently be uh, thought of that way as well. Um, <clears throat> so all of those can kind of show up that way for that. Uh, this can be with very small events. It can be with very large events. Uh, and it can be like one sponsor. Um, the Kennedy Center has an Opry in the Outfield. That's M&M's Opry in the Outfield. Clearly their major sponsor is Mars, you know, the company that makes M&M's. Uh, but you can have, you know, smaller sorts of ga galas that have, you know, a lot of different sponsors in them where you have kind of sponsorship list. You can also kind of do things where you have sponsorship levels that appeal to individuals as well as, you know, to companies as well. So that can be something uh, to think about on a lot of those sorts of uh, kinds of <clears throat> situations as well. All right. Moving on to our next type, cause related marketing. So this differs from sponsorship uh, in a few ways, but it is still a mutually beneficial partnership at its best. Uh, in this, a company is donating to a, long, a nonprofit when their product is purchased. There's kind of a more direct uh, line there. Whereas a sponsorship, the company is getting their name out, getting kind of advertising, getting their profile or their reputation raised by association. Uh, here though, the nonprofit is actually doing something directly to help the company have their product actually be purchased. Um, if you've ever had, you know, your Girl Scout troop or your local PTA partner with a restaurant to do the thing where everybody who goes in on Wednesday and mentions it or shows the Facebook post uh, has 10% of their bill donated to the organization, that's cause-related marketing. That is that kind of donation. Uh, that is that kind of direct cash contribution from a corporation. <clears throat> so it can be very local, it can be very small, it can be done on much larger levels as well. Uh, the phrase cause related marketing is initially attributed to Amer American Express, who is said to have first used it back in 1983. Uh, they had a campaign to help raise money to restore the Statue of Liberty. They donated one penny every time somebody used their credit card. Uh, and that campaign was apparently remarkably successful. They grew their number of new cardholders by 45%. Uh, uh, in more kind of recent things, one of the best known examples of cause related marketing is a company called Tom's Shoes. They have a slogan, one for one. You buy a pair of shoes, they donate a pair of shoes to areas in need. Uh, so that's where cause related marketing can also bridge the area between cash donations and non cash, uh, because sometimes it is going to be a donation of product rather than uh, money. But frequently, this is more of the when something is purchased, a certain percentage goes to a nonprofit. You know, if you've ever had somebody at the grocery store ask if you wanted to round up your total to donate to, you know, a, a cause, that is a version of this. All right, and finally on cash related donation front, matching gifts through employees. Employee matching gifts are grants that an employer makes <clears throat> to match their employees' charitable contributions. Typically, uh, these matching gifts are dollar for dollar. Uh, but some companies uh, will have double or triple options or just do that for a limited time. Uh, some companies may also give matching gifts for employees' volunteer efforts based on either the employee's salary or what the value of volunteer hours is. <clears throat> Procedures for this vary from company to company. Um, <clears throat> Frequently, though, this is something that is going to be more on the part of uh, the employee where they need to uh, file paperwork with their HR to say that they are doing this thing and that they want to have this, you know, uh, that they want this money given to this particular organization. They are making a donation and that they would very much like for that to, uh, to go to this and they would like their company to then uh, to match it for them. <clears throat> so that is frequently something that is more on the part of the employee than the, on the part of the nonprofit. Uh, so that's something to kind of 
make sure people are aware of, especially your volunteers, as uh, something to kind of feel out about local businesses sometimes if they have that kind of policy. Um, but that is more something that the employee needs to initiate. Uh, you can try to raise your profile in general to have people be aware of you um, or try to make sure that, you know, that is part of kind of your volunteer onboarding is to make sure that people are checking for that kind of option. Uh, if they have outside work at a company that might do the sort of matching gift, um, but all of that can vary rather a lot from company to company. So talk about cash donations. Now we're going to look at non-cash options. This is just what it sounds like contributions from companies that are not monetary. They are also generally called in-kind donations. The, <clears throat> the uh, categories they fall into are generally products, pro bono services, employee volunteerism, and space. We will talk about each of those in turn. Products. Products are important. A lot of relationships start here uh, with the donation of product from a company. If you have ever, you know, asked local businesses to donate something for a raffle, for a silent auction, that is a donation of product, that is an in-kind gift. You know, you can see that on kind of a larger scale with, you know, a mattress company that's donating mattresses to a homeless shelter, uh, your local, you know, a large electronics company that's donating computers to schools. Uh, it can be, again, small scale, large scale, depends a little bit on the nonprofit and the business involved. Uh, there's a website called Good360 that can be a great resource for nonprofits looking for the, these sorts of gifts. Uh, they can help you be matched with a company that has inventory or product to give. They also have an online catalog of things that have been donated that they are uh, willing to have people kind of claim, see if things are in your area that you can pick up. Uh, they have a couple of different kinds of partnership uh, where you can work with an organization that is uh, willing to receive a large amount of goods and distribute them to multiple nonprofits um, can kind of, you know, look at that website in kind of detail. It's just good360.org. Uh, goodness, you're still having people show up occasionally. I wonder if people are getting kicked out of the call. I hope not. <laughs> If you are, thank you. if you are returning because you got kicked out of the call, thank you for coming back. <laughs> but anyway, that's that is kind of how a product is. <clears throat> that is one that kind of is very clear for a lot of people. You are asking them to donate a specific kind of thing that is their usual product. <clears throat> Pro dono services and employee volunteerism are very similar uh, because this can be time. Uh, basically from the company to a nonprofit. Uh, some companies choose to support nonprofits volunteering their employees or their experience, their expertise. Uh, employee volunteerism can come in the form of a big event. Uh, Hewlett Packard does a day of service where basically employees are paid to volunteer in the community that particular day. Uh, they might organize it with a specific large nonprofit. Uh, they might also do it on kind of a smaller basis where one of the benefits of uh, employment is that you can have a day or two that you take off to volunteer somewhere, but that you are still paid for. Uh, that is still seen by a contribution from the company in this form of employee volunteerism, since the employee is still being paid for their day, even if they are not working at the company that day. <clears throat> now, companies can also donate expertise. If they are a uh, organization that does legal advice, tax preparation, marketing website development, any of these sorts of things, uh, they may have kind of uh, an, an avenue for donating services to the community. They may also encourage employees to serve on the board of local nonprofits. Employee volunteerism is often also a great start to a relationship with the company, uh, because if you have a volunteer who works for a particular corporation and they become passionate about your organization and your mission, they can help kind of raise your profile with the business that they work for. And that can kind of help uh, start the relationship where you can open that avenue up to the idea of sponsorships or college related marketing or some of the kind of larger uh, avenues there. All right, and finally, space. Uh, that one's also kind of, I feel self-explanatory. 
a company can donate the use of its facilities. Um, examples, hotels can offer up ballrooms for a particular event. Um, a law firm might offer up its boardroom on, you know, for pro bono consulting, any of these kinds of things. If it's an organization that has a lot of space, especially space that is not used uh, extremely regularly, then that might be a way that's, you know, that can be kind of donated on at least a temporary basis. Uh, you see this a lot actually in the nonprofit sector, I feel. It's part of the business model for most public libraries is to have meeting rooms or other kinds of space that can be checked out uh, by anybody who is visiting them. So that's, while this is one of the main forms of kind of corporate giving, it is also definitely something you see uh, in the nonprofit sector a lot, I feel as well. You know, churches are a uh, very notable one for having space that they will frequently let uh, local nonprofit sorts of organizations use on some kind of temporary basis. All right, so that covers all of the how companies give. So let's take a little bit of a look at why they're giving. Now, unlike a foundation, a corporation does not exist to give money away. That is not the starting basis for them. Their allegiance is to their customers, their employees, their shareholders, and their bottom line. And as nonprofits with a very much different uh, kind of strategy, it's important to keep that in mind when approaching them for support. Some of the reasons that a company might give to a nonprofit that we will talk about in turn are to take advantage of tax deductions, to advance their own business objectives, to increase their visibility or to be good corporate citizens. There's a whole kind of sector of uh, responsible corporate citizenship that gets talked about that often plays into the partnership between nonprofits and corporations. As we go through each of these, I'm going to mention some questions to think about uh, that might help you determine if that is uh, the kind of avenue you'd want to use to approach a corporation for support. All right, first of course, is tax deductions. Uh, this is one that also comes up when talking about um, <clears throat> individual support as well. It's frequently the case where people want to kind of talk about why uh, individuals give. <clears throat> so, and it is often thought of as kind of the most cynical reason. Um, however, it is also a very kind of useful one, even if it is extremely, uh, just on the practical side of things, it is something that is extremely useful. Now, the thing to think about there and the most important kind of aspect of it is, are you a legal nonprofit? Uh, because that is the question that is the most important one uh, for that kind of <clears throat> conversation. Because again, if they are doing that for the tax purposes, then they will need to be able to prove that they were giving to a reputable, recognized nonprofit organization. So that is the thing to think about there is to make sure that you have, you know, all those ducks in a row to make sure that you are set up with all of your paperwork and all of those sorts of things that will kind of help prove to an organization that you do have uh, that kind of capability, that kind of, you know, um, just that kind of uh, stature, basically, so that you can see that, you know, they will know that that is something that they will be able to claim later on their taxes. Um, it's also generally not the only or even the major reason a lot of organizations give. Uh, just because just because that is a benefit doesn't mean it's going to be the primary motivator for a lot of folks. <clears throat> You're usually going to see it in conjunction with one of these others. Uh, so advancing business objectives. This is kind of the overarching motivation behind a lot of corporate philanthropy. Altruism can factor in as well, but usually the underlying question is going to be how does supporting this organization good for our business? And what do you think a company means by good for business? Well, 
they are probably going to be looking for nonprofits to connect them to current and potential customers and or who will address issues of interest for the company. So if you're trying to demonstrate to a company how your nonprofit can help advance their business objectives, some questions to kind of think about include what audience or constituents do you share with this company? This can be easier for some nonprofits than others. Uh, for example, an environmental protection organization might share constituents with REI or North Face that sell outdoor gear and equipment. So you might have kind of very clear line uh, to draw there. But if you're really not sure, uh, there are some ways you can kind of think about to tell. You know, look at a company's advertisements, their placement of products, you know, what it does it seem that they kind of prioritize, you know, look at their website, who are they currently supporting? I can give you some information about uh, what it is they want to kind of uh, make front and center about their reputation and their uh, objectives. Now, do companies want to connect with your constituents? Are there specific groups of yours with which a company would want to connect? Uh, for example, one of PBS's largest sponsors is Viking River Cruises. Uh, Viking River Cruises did a survey of their current members and as part of this series of questions uh, asked them what TV shows do you watch and apparently the overwhelming response was Masterpiece Classics and Downton Abbey on PBS. <laughs> so to target new customers who were similar to their current customers they began advertising on Masterpiece Classic. Uh, so that is one way to kind of think about it uh, because the company is going to look for customers uh, both kind of in their base and outside of it. So you can kind of play both parts of that. Uh, but definitely, if you think that a lot of the people you help or in your community uh, would kind of fit the groups that the company also wants to reach, then that is definitely kind of a piece uh, that can be emphasized when approaching them. Are you addressing an issue of interest to the company? Uh, if you're a nonprofit working to promote recycling, environmental cleanup, uh, that may be something you can talk to with a waste management company. Uh, studies have shown that besides price and quality, buyers generally choose a product from a company that they view as socially responsible. So connecting with a nonprofit uh, for a good cause helps get that point across and is a reason why a company can say yes to partnerships. Uh, now, it is not just about the company's good name and reputation, though. It is also about your organization as well. Uh, before seeking corporate support, you should also give thought to who you want to do business with. Some corporate partnerships may turn off some of your donors. You might want to think about who your donors are and what kinds of companies they would not want to see you partner with. Uh, if your organization does not have an official gift acceptance policy, uh, it's a good idea to think about establishing one uh, before seeking corporate support. Uh, having an official policy like that is kind of a guide for a nonprofit that lays down this framework for gifts that you will accept and educate your staff and your board about critical issues triggered by certain gifts and how to turn down ones that fall outside the policy. For example, if you were working for a nonprofit that you know, uh, was helping fund research uh, for lung cancer, would you necessarily want to accept a gift from William Morris or another Lord cigarette company? Uh, so that's, that is kind of a tension there where you might have a company who is very interested in raising their profile or their good name, uh, but it might be something that would in the long run harm your organization by association. So that is definitely a thing to think about there. All right, so next, next reason, increasing visibility more kind of generally. Supporting nonprofit causes, one way to draw positive attention to a company. Companies frequently look for nonprofits that can raise their visibility by reaching an audience that they aren't already reaching, or just a large audience if you were at a kind of large nonprofit. Uh, in turn, companies that perceive, uh, <clears throat> companies often perceive that associating their name and brand with, with a nonprofit's good works is an effective way to attract customers as well. Uh, this can sometimes be called reflected glory your reputation, your visibility are kind of reflected onto them. That's another reason to keep in mind thinking about uh, who you want to work with and why. So you may be able to help a company raise its profile, uh, but you would generally want to ask some questions and think about uh, how well this might work and whether or not it is something you wish to do. 
How visible is your organization in the community? Are you very well known? Do you have a great reputation that you can talk about that you can tell a company would reflect upon them? You know, who is your audience? Do you serve the general public? Is it a specific population? Roughly how many people is it? Uh, is it simply an audience that this company hasn't reached before? How are you getting their name in front of the public? All right, do you have a website that is well uh, visited? Do you have other media coverage? Do you have publications? Do you have events where there would be advertising? Uh, any of those sorts of things are options that you could offer as how you would be helping them raise their visibility. Now, something that can be kind of trickier is looking for companies that need their own kind of image boost uh, or helping a company do damage control. Again, this is another time to keep in mind the previous slide and thinking about whether or not you want to work with a corporation and what working with a particular company might end up reflecting back on you. Um, however, for example, in the years since the BP oil spill, uh, you will still see commercials on TV where they talk about how they give back to the environment. They now have an entire page on their website called Gulf Commitment how they are helping regional and national tourism campaigns, supporting long-term research in the area. So that is a way that they manage to try to pull back some public opinion is by working with nonprofits and working with uh, charitable kinds of programs in the area to kind of reverse how people associated their name and the idea of the environment. Uh, so again, that might not be a side of things you're at all interested in, but it is one to consider when thinking about all of the avenues of kind of corporate support. And finally, one of the motivations is to be a good corporate citizen. Now, this is where the answer is largely not about profits. Uh, the term corporate social responsibility uh, has been a frequently used and frequently thought about one for a lot of organizations. And so with this, uh, <clears throat> it means that you have companies that want to contribute to economic development, improve the quality of life of their employees, the community, where their customers are living and working. Some corporate leaders want to give back to the community where they do business or where they live. Uh, companies who want to reach out to nonprofits as part of their government community relations work, develop relationships with community leaders, take on the uh, a role of you know, leading on civic issues. So if you wanted to appeal to a company based on those interests, starting with local companies that can see the work you're doing is usually the most effective strategy there. So you kind of want to look at what companies are near you? And that is a question we can definitely take a look at in Foundation Directory Online. Uh, how are you working to enhance your local community? And how deep is your network of community leaders? You know, think of your, your donors, your board members, your volunteers, anyone associated with your nonprofit in some way. Those with whom corporate executives might, might want to associate or might want to uh, bring in when they are talking about their work with community leaders. All right, so thinking a little bit, bit, a little bit more about how to find corporate partners. The things <clears throat> you want to look for companies based on, what you do, what they do, and where they are located. That can be plant, factory, or office. So again, we're going to look in uh, Foundation Director Online to do a little bit of looking at how to do some of those searches. Uh, but you can kind of look for where organizations are located. You all can also search uh, by kind of subjects that are uh, the ones you are looking for specifically. Now, this is mainly useful for company-sponsored foundations and some corporate giving programs. If you're looking for ones that do not have those kind of formalized uh, associations from their company, especially if you're looking at smaller or more local companies, the kind of direct approach is frequently better there. Uh, being able to kind of talk to a general manager or looking at their website to see if they have any kind of community involvement so that there's a particular email or contact person uh, for that. <clears throat> so another way to kind of 
get a lay of you know who's around and who you might approach, keeping up, uh, just staying updated on news and various things, you know, business journals, that type of thing, keeping up on who is a new company to, in town who's leaving, you know, individuals who have been promoted, any of those sorts of kind of important news items about a company that might give you a little information on, you know, again, their community involvement, their kind of priorities, their fortunes in general. Uh, so kind of staying up on that kind of news is extremely helpful. If you are with a Forefront member organization, uh, we actually have login information we can give you for a newspaper and journal database if you wanted to look at articles from things like uh, cranes and whatnot. Uh, if you are not, I highly recommend visiting your public library and seeing what kind of access they have for news and journal databases if you don't personally subscribe, uh, because they usually have excellent access to those sorts of things. All right, so <clears throat> we will at this point switch my screen share to look at foundation directory online. So give me just a moment while we do that. If you have had any questions up to this point, please feel free to put them in the chat <clears throat> while I get that part done. All right, hopefully everyone is now seeing Foundation Directory online. If you are not, please let me know. All right, so as I mentioned near the very beginning of this, uh, if you are a with a Forefront member organization, uh, you can send in research requests to the library and we will search this sort of database for you and send you results. Uh, if you are interested in doing your own searching um, and you are not a member or if you are a member and still just want to do your own bit of searching you can also email us for uh, information about uh, the temporary passes that the publishers of this database are making available to their essential version all right so if we are wanting to specifically look for foundations associated with companies near us we need to go into the advanced search so once we are in here, we're actually even going to bring up our additional filters because we are looking for specific organization types. We are looking for potentially corporate giving programs. Uh, even though they do not typically file 990s, there is still frequently information available a little bit about what they do. So there's some information uh, in the database about them, even though it is not as detailed generally as that about company sponsored foundations. So, we will look those up. All right, and again, if you are wanting to make sure they are people near you, we can put in a location. So, let's just see, in general, uh, who has given in the last couple of years in the Chicago area of these types of organizations. All right. So we have about 92 that are located in Chicago and they have given, we have information on over 13,000 grants to over 2000 recipients. Now I mentioned the uh, temporary passes for Foundation Directory Online Essential. If you are going to do your own searching in Essential, you will not see these two columns. Uh, these two sets of information are only available in the professional version, but you will still have the grant maker information. So, you can take a look at these grant makers. So you can <clears throat> look at who they are and find out a little bit more about them. Uh, if you wanted to, you know, this gives you just a tiny bit of information. If you just want names to kind of look into later, you can select up to 100 results at a time uh, to save as a list. Uh, if you're doing this on your own machine, you can just save that directly as a PDF to your own computer. Uh, if you are working elsewhere, like if you uh, 
are visiting another FIN location, because there are a few others in Illinois, you can email results to yourself. <clears throat> now, if you want to look at them more in detail, we can go into one. So profile will give you their name. Uh, if the database has a website for them, it will be here up at the top, but sometimes there is not. We have graphs that kind of give a general view of their last five years, uh, the areas that they generally fund, where they tend to fund, and what uh, size their grants tend to be. Each of these is clickable into for more detail. Like if you wanted to look at what counties in Illinois they're given to, you can open up that map further. Uh, if you wanted to see uh, like what if they give more to higher education or elementary education, you could click into that map to see more detail there. Recent grants that uh, fit our search. Uh, location, unfortunately, will restrict both where the grant maker and their recipients are located. So we are also only looking at uh, Chicago area locations they have given to, as well as them being located in Chicago. Uh, so you can see a few recent ones here, <clears throat> some information about those their kind of interests. These are all based on how their grant details have been indexed in the database. Since this is a company sponsored foundation, their company will be linked here. Um, and you'll note that they also have a specific uh, kind of give, corporate giving program that is apparently focused primarily on pro bono services. <clears throat> you'll get what they generally, uh, their mission statement or kind of a purpose statement about what they do. Other funders that the computer feels are very similar to this one. If you ever do a search and you only have a few results, but they are very good results, or at least a few of them are, you can look at this to see if there are any foundations that didn't come up in your search, but that are still uh, likely options. If they have information about their application process or any uh, requests for proposals that have been submitted uh, to the database, you'll note here, they only give to pre-selected organizations. So that's one where you kind of need to build that relationship before you'd be able to make an ask of them, where they give ten generally, and that they do not do grants to individuals. Financial information, if you wanted to see their 990s, you can get those from here as well. Their who's who. So if you wanted to see if you knew anybody who worked here that was you know, on their, their staff list that's uh, in the database, or if your board knows anyone, or if there are any kind of contacts to be made, you can kind of check it here. Uh, occasionally, you will see a LinkedIn icon next to someone's name. Uh, if you see that, you can actually open up their LinkedIn page and check the profile that way. And then all the way at the bottom, some other information about the company. So if they don't have a website, you will usually have a phone number or an email or something here, or at the very least, you have their physical location so that a letter can be written to them. All right. So. You can save individual profiles if you wanted all of these together. You can, again, save them directly to your machine if you're working on yours. You can also email it to yourself. Uh, if you want this longer bit of information, you can also save more than one of these at a time. Uh, you can, however, only save 10 of them at a time. So you could click a few of them and either save their profiles, because that's the long bit of information, uh, or again, if you're not on your own machine, email them to yourself. Uh, you can also save things as a CSV, which can be saved as an Excel file. If you choose this option, you get an in-between amount of information. So the PDF list is this one line that you see here on the screen. The profile is that much longer bit of information we just scrolled through for Sidley Austin. The CSV or Excel file will give you this line of information plus the basic contact info that was on their profile. Uh, so not a lot more, but slightly more than the PDF list. Uh, which one works for you is up to you entirely if you're doing your searching there. But that is kind of how that works. So if you were looking for a company sponsored foundation or a corporate giving program, and we'll say that we don't care where they are located, but you are still located in kind of the Chicago, Chicago area. Uh, and we will do one of the kind of common odd terms. 
So when you're looking for subject terms, anything has this downward pointing little carrot, the little arrow, will expand into more specific subsections. So you can get very specific to start your search, or you can start very broad. Uh, it can be very helpful to kind of skim through this list, you know, just to kind of see what terms are available, uh, because some things might not match how you talk about them. Uh, if you do an after school program, you're going to want the term out of school learning. Uh, if you want to see all of the terms that are in this database and what they mean exactly, uh, you can actually go to taxonomy.candid.org to see all of the terms and see how they are defined. Let's say that's what you're looking for. Let's see. Yes, and Zoe has helpfully put that link in the chat for anyone who just wants to copy that out. All right, so on that, if you were looking for companies who have given to, if you're looking for company foundations or corporate giving programs that are given to out of school learning in the Chicago area, we've got 81 results here. Uh, so we can kind of, you can kind of take a look through those. And again, you can look at profiles more in detail to kind of see if, you know, maybe they only gave to one organization that makes it pretty clearly someone that has kind of relationship with probably a member of the board. Uh, maybe they give more broadly. You can kind of look at what their you know, subject areas tend to be, what their stated purpose is, what their specific program areas are to kind of judge whether or not this is a good fit this way. All right, so that is kind of how searching that database works, saving results works. We'll actually switch back to my slides for a moment to kind of wrap things up. So key takeaways, corporate philanthropy motivated by company interests. Companies are not in the business of giving money away. Um, so they're going to want to see return on their investment, visibility for their business, uh, raising their profile, uh, actually even helping them increase you know profit through some of that cause uh, the cause related marketing if you are getting everyone who wants to you know help donate to your organization but do so by partnering with a local restaurant you might just flat out be helping increase their business <clears throat> look at your organization from the company's point of view they want to know who your audience is how visible you are in the co community um, basically kind of what they get relationship wise from your organization and companies support nonprofits in several different ways. So through their company sponsored foundations, through their giving programs, through in kind donations. Uh, so all of those kind of ways can be ways to approach them there. All right, so uh, if we were doing this in person, there's actually kind of a little exercise that is done. Uh, I will send that out as a link when I send our cleaned up recording of this. Uh, <laughs> so we will not not I try to do that in five minutes here. Uh, again, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to throw those in the chat at this time. And we always look forward to hearing from people. So again, if you want, you know, information about you know, FDO Essential, as I mentioned it, or anything else from the library, you can email us. Now, if you are with a member organization and you're not clear about library benefits, please email us. We can send you a uh, chart and description talking about them more in detail. Uh, so if you're just not familiar with what exactly your forefront membership means as far as the library is concerned, we will gladly uh, provide some in information there. Uh, there is our website. Uh, that's the main website for Forefront and the library's email address as well as my own. Um, let's see, I think we just have. So uh, for, for the Foundation Directory Online database, uh, it is not our database. We subscribe to it, but we do not produce it. <coughs> if you are part of a Forefront member organization, you can send a request to the library and we will search the professional version and send you back results. If you are interested in the temporary day passes for the essential version of the database, email the library saying that you are interested in the essential day pass and we will send you the info to log in and create your free account for those. So relationship building strategies for obtaining corporate sponsors. That can uh, differ a little bit again on kind of scale. Uh, so if you're kind of doing 
things for an event where you're going to look for kind of multiple sponsors. Um, looking at who your volunteers already work for and kind of building on those existing relationships, you know, uh, kind of talking about, you know, the partnership that already exists between the people who are working for them and volunteering for you. Uh, looking for, again, this can, you know, usually start best with local businesses where you're helping improve the same community. Uh, so kind of looking for ones where a, uh, interests line up where you can say, hey, we'll have you know, your name in our program. We like the work you've done in the community. Uh, we are doing this work in the community. We should work together. Uh, some of those things are uh, very helpful for, again, kind of looking at uh, local sponsors who are invested in the community. Um, but yeah, that's kind of, kind of the places to start there, frequently looking at uh, the volunteering side of things or some of these more simple uh, uh, donations of product. Uh, if you're you know, looking for things for a raffle or for silent auctions, kind of starting off that way, where you can then build off the, you know, your thank you notes for that and talk about the work you've done uh, with kind of those initial donations can also help uh, grow that sort of relationship into something larger. All right, thank you for everybody who is attending. See some people needed to jump off right away, and that is fine. All right, so if we do not have any other questions, we'll let people go a whole three minutes early. <laughs> so everybody has a great day. Again, if you want to reach out to us, you are certainly welcome to do so.